this organ was not maintained for the last 20 years or 30 years. It had a restoration in 1998 and 1970 from an American company, but since then, nothing has been really done to it. You are in Jamaica, in one of the oldest churches in the country. Mm -hmm. 248 years old, mm -hmm. the St. James Anglican Church, probably the oldest building mm -hmm. left standing in the parish of St. James. You are here doing their organ. How old is this organ? Yeah, it is just wonderful <laughs> to be here in this old church. And, you know, I'm used to working in older churches in, in Germany and repairing their organs. And I'm so a specialist for restoration of mechanical organs. And you have your one here. And not only you have an old mechanical organ, you also have a mechanical tower clock. And the carillion in the church tower, that is you're really rare that churches still have carillions. Mm -hmm. So I'm very thrilled to see it. But on the other hand, I was also very sad when I came here the first time and the organ was almost not playable because it was so dusty. We had a renovation of the church building and a lot of dust got in the organ. And so I negotiated here with the church and now we're trying to see what we can do. How old is the organ? Is it about, I understand it could be about 132 years old? Yeah, that is about, I think, 1890 or so. Some of the oldest organ in, in the country, I would say. And in Savannah La Mar, we have organ from 1915. And in Black River, it is also from 1915. They are all mechanical organs, so very similar to here. And the amazing thing is built in 1915 in England during World War I. What is it that this organ needs to make it play similar to what it would play? Give us an idea of what it is that you are doing to the organ. Yeah, I mean, it is a complicated instrument. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember the first organ that we know was built in Greece 300 years before Christ with a similar mechanic. So it is an incredible construction that we built uh, more than 2,000 years ago. So here, the wind today comes from an electric blower that stays on the side here. Mm -hmm. Then it gets in the reservoir that is filled now with air pressure. You see it has weights on it to keep the air pressure. And the air pressure goes when through these channels in separate wind chests that holds all the pipes and the pallets and the wind. Each keyboard has a um, wind chest, so we have two, and one for the pedal board. The pedal pipes are here on the sides. And so to make sure that not everything is playing at the same time, you have stops here. And you pull them out. They all have a different character. <laughs> So they are more the softer wooden pipes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes pipes do not stop sounding. So that is one of the problems I'm trying to fix. Louder stop and here. Oh, you have the open diapason that is in the front. So the organist, of course, plays the music and he chooses when different stops to different hymns. How many years ago was this organ refurbished and how important is it for it to be serviced annually, etc.? Yeah, you know, an organ is in general constructed out of wood, of metal wires and some leather and that's it. <laughs> so with three materials, but over like 50 years, the leather deteriorated and need to be replaced. And the organ need to be maintained about maybe once a year for tuning and little adjusting. So unfortunately, this organ was not maintained for the last 20 years or 30 years. It had a restoration in 1998 and 1970 from an American company, but since then, nothing has been really done to it. Here you see the mechanic, a little tracker, is it called? A wood strip comes from the front to the keyboard goes over a square and pulls. 
pulls the pallets open and that makes the pipe sounding. Wow. And these, you see the stock pipes, they, these are all the original pipes. They put some tuning sliders on top of it because the pipes were not long enough. In the past, everything was more quiet. You know, people had more sensitive ears. Then later on, people in the parish uh, complained that the organ is too soft. So they raised the wind pressure, they put more weights on the reservoir. But that gave the organ a higher pitch. So that is a sort of with a compromise you, you have to live with. with you, exactly. And how tall did you say this organ was? This organ is about, I would say, 16 to, to eight, 18 feet. Mm -hmm. And it is very unusual. You have a great uh, wind chest here in the back that normally sits in the front. <laughs> and then you have a swell case for the second wind chest where everything is enclosed in wood with shutters. And the organist, additionally with a foot pedal, can open and close the box and so adjust the sound in, in volume. Here is the reservoir that is full of air. Air pressure is kept with its metal weights. And in the past, of course, the organ was hand pumped. Here underneath are two feeders in a very unusual construction. I have never seen this before because probably to keep insects and rodents out. They enclosed here the whole mechanic. So this doesn't have to be airtight. It is just to keep uh, rodents out from eating the lever or eating the wood. So and if you do not have electricity or have an outage, someone can pump the organ here and feeds from underneath the reservoir. So I'm also repairing this mechanic because it's really interesting if you really want to have a historic sound, you shut the modern electric blower off and hand pump the organ and then it should sound like 150 years ago. How valuable is this? Yeah, I mean, there are churches today who still buy new mechanical organs. They are the most expensive on this type of what you have. And you can easily spend a million or half a million we're talking about US dollars now. U U US dollars. So in our world, it is really treasure what you have here <laughs> because the church could not afford to buy, to buy a new instrument. And so I'm just trying to help somehow that we, this instrument will be maintained in the future. And also in, in the other churches where I'm working, in Black River and, and in South Lamar, because it's just a wonderful construction. With your rough climate, your high humidity, after over 100 years, it is basically just still working. It yeah. just needs better maintenance. How long will it take you to refurbish it to where it needs to be? When I first came here, I said the best solution would be a total restoration. So I would dismantle the whole instrument. It takes maybe a year and a half or two years. But we are looking when I cost at maybe 200,000 US dollars to, to restore it completely. And then you would have an organ like new again for the next hundred years. If you had an electronic organ from 1970, today there is no one who can repair this organ because things do not last long, technology changed and no one can repair it. But these instruments, we can be repaired endlessly. It is such a good value for the church to have it in mechanic, in wood, and everyone with a mechanical understanding can follow the functioning and can repair it again. If you have electronic parts, after 20 years, people have no clue. They have to throw it out and replace it with something else.